So welcome to this lecture of Digital Electronics, AI207. In this lecture, we will study about the counters and then we will start the asynchronous counters. So counters, if we talk about, are the sequential circuits which are used to count numbers. And the basic building block of this uh, counters are flip-flops. So you can use any flip-flop for counting. So number of flip-flops to be used for counting depends upon how many counts we have to do. Okay? And the flip-flop which is used to count is actually the count takes place because uh, the state of the flip-flop changes. So for every state change we can count it, we can count that and we can we can uh, mark it as an account it has a count so counters if we talk about uh, they can be broadly classified into asynchronous or ripple counters and the synchronous counters so asynchronous counters are the counters in which the flip-flop within the counter does not changes the state simultaneously so if all the flip-flops which are there in the counter do not change its uh, their state simultaneously then those type of uh, counters are called asynchronous counters okay. then there will be uh, then there will be clock uh, but all the 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 clock of all the flip flops will not be connected to a common clock okay there will be some other arrangement we'll see that arrangement in the next slide from next slide onwards so these asynchronous counters are easy to design okay, but they are slow and the reason for these slow why they are slow we'll understand it when uh, it will be clear when we will discuss the counters okay and similarly the synchronous counters so the synchronous counters are the counters in which there will be flip-flops and all the flip-flops changes their state simultaneously okay and therefore this flip-flops are complex but fast because all the flip-flop changes their state simultaneously so they are fast but sometimes it becomes compli it becomes uh, it, it is uh, difficult to design those circuits so the design may be a little complex okay and then the this counters if you can see they can i mean if you want to actually count some numbers so you may like to count the counting in upward direction starting from zero to higher numbers or from higher numbers to the lower numbers so if you are counting from lower number to higher number then you call it an up counter whereas if you are counting from a high number to the low number then you call it a down counter okay so this is how the counters basic definitions uh, basic terminology is related to so what do you mean by a counter so it is nothing but a circuit which helps in counting numbers and it is made up of flip-flops and this flip-flops are triggered with the help of clocks and then there are various type of counters asynchronous counters and synchronous counters so asynchronous counters are those counters which do not trigger simultaneously all the flip-flops of the counters does not trigger simultaneously whereas the where are the synchronous counters are the counters in which all the flip-flops trigger simultaneously then they can be classified into up counter and down counter so let's start with asynchronous counter and a simpler one uh, let's start with 2-bit ripple counter and 2-bit ripple up counter so we want a circuit which can count in the upward direction and it is a 2-bit so if it is a 2-bit then uh, for with 2 bits we can maximum count up to 4 so because you see there are 4 possible combinations which you can make with 2 bits so therefore we can count up to 4 and this type of counter here we will uh, first like to design the counter which is called the asynchronous counter and the other name for asynchronous counter is the ripple counter so what we want to design is a 2-bit ripple up counter using negative h triggered flip-flop okay so again uh, how the triggering will take place is also defined here so the triggering of the flip-flop will take place on the negative edges of the clock so this is what the arrangement we have so how to do it so it's not difficult to do it 
uh, let's say we have two flip flops and we want to count in the upward direction with the negative flip flop so how many number of flip flops we require first of all okay so the number of flip flops required will be equal to the number of bits so if we have uh, two bits we want two bit triple counter so two flip flops will be required okay now the other thing is we want up counting so the up counting will be starting from the count will start from zero so zero will be the first count okay zero then one two and three so three will be the fourth count so in all we can count up to three okay not up to four but up to three and zero will also be considered as a count okay so this should be remembered then the counting then the clock pulse should be uh, the the flip flop should get triggered on the negative edges of the clocks so to do this what we do is we connect two flip flops okay and in the asynchronous flip flop what we do is see these are the two flip flops so these are t flip flops which we have used t flip flops we have used we, you can use any flip flop jk flip flop sr flip flop okay t flip flop d flip flop but t flip flop is easy to understand that is why we have used t flip flops although here you can see the notation j and k but as you can see that uh, the all the two I mean both the two inputs are connected together so then the arrangement looks like a t flip flop okay now this is an h triggered flip flop negative h triggered flip flop so we use a bubble here on the clock and it is an h so we use a rectangle here to show in the show it in the diagram so we are using a t flip flop negative h triggered okay so negative and h triggered okay so now this up till this the things are clear then how to connect them so you see in asynchronous counters the first flip flop gets the initial clock okay the uh, the input the in uh, this uh, uh, the clock input to the first flip flop is the your initial your uh, actual clock then to the next flip flop you can you can feed this clock okay uh, the clock of the next flip flop can get the input from either from the q1 or q1 bar right because this if this input is if this output is q1 then this output will be q1 bar so it can get the output from here or here so let's say if we connect the output from here then how it will look like so you see what will happen in this case if you connect the output uh, from here so the output when this clock first clock pulse will come so you this is your first clock pulse so the, when the clock first clock pulse appears the negative edge of the first clock pulse appears this flip flop will get triggered because you want it to count in the upward direction okay because you see if this is zero then in, in uh, if initially it is zero when you apply one then it will become one so the count will increase right so if it is so what we are assuming that the counter is resetted and clear although the clear inputs are not shown here in this circuit but there will be always some clear inputs so those clear inputs have already cleared it and that is why you know that q1 is resetted i mean both q1 and q2 are at 0 0 okay and at that instant q1 and q2 bar q1 bar and q2 bar will be at 1 1 so that is why we are not feeding the q1 bar and q2 bar because okay, i mean q, we are not feeding uh, the q1 bar to the clock input of the second flip flop because this is at 1 and we want an up counter so the up counter the next state uh, from the the if the first state is 0 0 then the next state should be 0 1 so if we feed it from here then what will happen it will not be a it will not start uh, with this one zero okay uh, the next state will not be one zero rather okay and it is not going to be a negative h triggered so that is why we are using because this is a negative h triggered we already know and we want the next count to be an increased count so this is if zero zero we want the next in the next count this to be one zero this is this is zero zero so next count we want this to be zero and this to be one so that is why we are feeding this output q1 to the next uh, to the clock of the next flip flop right so this is what the reason is so if we feed this then we can see that when the negative edge of the clock uh, occurs the q1 flip flop the output of the q1 flip flop triggers from zero to one okay simultaneously at the same instant q2 is also zero so if q2 is zero 
and q1 becomes 1 because the it is because uh, the input is already tied to 1 it's permanently tied to 1 and whenever the clock appears then the q1 uh, changes its state so the clock appears and the q1 changes its state so if the first count was 0 0 the next count will be because if the first count this is the msb q2 is the msb and q1 is the lsb okay so this is the first count 0 0 then the next count should be 0 1 so you see this flip flop should trigger so you see that is why we have done okay so i have already explained you i will i have already explained you this so this is the next count is 0 1 now the next count will be what we want is if when this clock pulse when this changes when the negative age of this q1 occurs so this is the negative age of this q1 so when this occurs then the flip flop 2 will trigger and it will change its state so the output of the q2 will become 1 in this case so the next output will be this q1 is 0 and q1 is 1 so the first output was 0 0 first count was 0 0 first state was 0 0 you can call it in any way so the first state was 0 0 next state was 0 1 then the third state was 1 0 and you see it will remain same the uh, q2 will remain 1 till the next negative age of q1 does not occur so the next age of the the negative age of the uh, the negative age of the, the q1 occurs at this instant so q2 will remain 1 up till this instant okay so in this in this duration during this duration both q1 and q2 remains 1 so now you can see if you just uh, see the output up to this clock pulse so you can see that there are four edges which have occurred so this is your first age second age third age and fourth age so when the fourth age occur at this when the fourth clock age occurs when the fourth negative clock age occurs uh, till that time the counter has counted four states has the counter went into four states so what are those four states those four states are 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 okay so you see this is how you can say that the counter is actually counting up to four and what is this counting it is counting nothing but it is counting <coughs> the number of clock ages so that is why uh, this is why because why we why we, why we can call it this because the number of clock ages which occurs are four so as many number of counts you have to count that many number of clock pulses occur so actually the counter counts the number of clock ages okay if it is an age triggered flip-flop it is a pulse triggered flip-flop it is a level triggered flip-flop then it will count the levels right if it is a positive age triggered then it will count the positive ages so this is what the this is how the counting takes place so this is what is written you can read it out so uh, this is how the counter uh, this counter counts uh, in the upward direction so this is an up counter two bit ripple up counter using a negative age triggered flip-flop and you can also call it a negative age triggered t flip-flop rather okay so let's move on to the another counter then then the another counter is your 2-bit ripple down counter so 2-bit ripple count down counter is the counter which is exactly opposite of the counter which we have seen right now so again the arrangement will be same because we want a negative age trigger so the bubbles are used here okay so this bubble is already inside but it should be outside it should be shown outside okay so there is a mistake in this so please correct it and it is an age triggered so there is, should be a triangle so a triangle is shown then it is a it is a this flip flops are also t flip flops because both the j and k are connected with each other again the input arrangement is also same as what we have done in the earlier case which was our up counter and but the change is rather than taking the output from q1 and feeding it to the clock pulse of the second flip flop now we are doing uh, the opposite what we are doing is we are taking the output from q1 bar and uh, feeding it to the and uh, this becomes the the q1 bar becomes the input to the clock of the second flip flop okay so this is what your circuit looks like and the reasons are same because if you start from here then the counting will be up counting so the counting will be up counting but if we start from q1 bar then our counting will be down counting because here in this case if we assume that uh, if, uh, that for the initial in the initial condition the initial conditions all the uh, when we start counting uh, the uh, all I mean both the flip-flops 
are having the state as 0 0 okay so you can uh, this q1 and q2 are 0 0 in this case so this is what you can assume if both of them are 0 0 that is you have uh, you have made clear although that clear input is not shown here but you have uh, cleared the two flip flops okay by applying some input on the clear terminal so if you apply that then both the flip flops will get clear the output stored the uh, on the flip flops will get clear and uh, because of that q1 and q2 will both uh, will be both zero whereas q1 bar and q2 bar will be both one one okay so you see we'll start the counting from so in case of down counter what we want is we want and again it's a two bit counter so we can count up to four counts okay so we want four counts so the counting should be let's say the first counting is zero zero then we want one one then we want one zero then we want zero one and then we want zero zero again okay so you see so zero zero is your first count then one 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 zero zero one and zero zero okay so this is how it is counting so you can either call it one 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 zero zero one or one zero zero so that is also same so zero three two one okay so this is down counting or you, if you start from three so three two one zero so to do this i uh, have already explained you the arrangement okay so two flip flops can count can have four states and it is called a two bit counter okay so down counter if you want so we have to feed the q1 bar to the clock of the second flip flop and the timing diagram for the same circuit will look the logic diagram is clear okay the only difference from the previous circuit is that in the previous circuit we have taken q1 and fed it to the clock of the second flip flop here we are taking q1 bar and feeding it to the clock of the second flip flop so this is what the changes now the timing diagram looks like something like this so it is a negative edge triggered from the first negative edge q1 as it was earlier as what is as it was in the earlier case the q1 waveform is same as the previous case q2 bar is not q2 uh, q1 q1 bar is also shown here because we are feeding here we are taking the this is becoming the q1 bar is becoming the clock for the second flip flop so this is also shown here so this is the q1 bar so wherever q1 is 0 q1 bar will be 1 and wherever q1 is 1 q1 bar will be equal to 0 so this is how your circuit looks like in this case now whenever the negative edge of this q1 bar occurs at that time q2 triggers okay because q1 q1 bar is the clock for the second flip flop so q1 bar negative edge of the first uh, this q1 bar occurs the first negative edge occurs at this instant so this instant you can see the q2 is changing right q2 is changing so you are taking the output from q1 and q2 okay q1 and q2 are becoming your output terminal so q1 and q2 both are 0 0 in this case in the next state the next state of q1 and q2 both are 1 1 because this is triggered the third state it is this is 1 0 okay because q2 is msp and q1 is your lsp so 1 0 in the third state it is 0 1 okay so 0 1 then you can see this is becoming 0 1 then it is in the next state it is 0 0 so it is again the explanation is same that the counter counts the negative ages of the clock so it can count it has it has counted four ages of this clock because this, this is the first age second age third age and the fourth age so after the fourth age the counter comes to its initial state okay so that is zero zero so whatever is it has started right so this is how your counter counts then moving on to so this was about uh, in general the general counters which are called two bit up the up and down counters but uh, and in those counters what we have done we have used all the four states so whatever number of states that counter can produce those two flip flops can produce we have used all those states to count to count the number but suppose we want to count uh, some number which is uh, which is not a multiple of two okay which is not a multiple of two or i should say which is not a power of two okay two to the power n which is which does not satisfy this uh, criteria of two to the power n because if we are using three flip-flops then it can count a maximum up to eight but suppose we want to count up to six only okay so then the number of flip-flops which we have to use 
we cannot use two flip flops in that case because if we use two flip flops then we can count only up to four states up to four only because two to the power two is four whereas if we use three flip flops then we can although we can count up to eight because two to the power three is equal to eight but we don't want the count to go up to eight we want it uh, we want the machine or the circuit to count up to six only so first of all we have to decide the number of flip flops which you which we need to design in this case so if your flip flop if your counter does not count uh, the maximum count which uh, it does not count or the number of counts which it can count the number of counts which your counter can count is less than the maximum number of counts which it can count actually then the actual number of counts which the counter can count is called your modulo or the mod of that counter so when the counter counts something n which is less than 2 to the power n okay and n the small n here stands for the number of flip flops used in the counter then the capital n is called your mod n or the mod of the counter okay in this case as i have already told that we let's say we have to count up to 6 so then it will be called mod 6 counter okay and in this case uh, how you will decide the number of flip flops the minimum number of flip flops required that should be decided by the criteria as that your capital n should be less than or equal to 2 to the power n 2 to the power small n okay so this is what the criteria is although i forgot to write that criteria but this is written here in the explanation in this explanation you can understand it so as for n is equal to 2 or i have already explained 2 to the power 2 is equal to 4 it can only count up to 3 okay so uh, but for the uh, but for n is equal to 3 it can count up to 8 0 to 7 okay so that is why because 6 is falling but uh, is less than 7 so that is why you need three flip flops okay and for the remaining remaining counts which are unused count okay so uh, like let's say in this case the count number 7 okay uh, the counter will count up to 0 to 5 and the 6 and 7 counter 6 and 7 will be uncounted okay will the they will they, they they are undesired counts so for those undesired counts what we do we we design some circuit some with the help of some combinational gates and we reset those counts uh, we, we reset those count if those count appears and to do this we use our simplifying technique of uh, uh, this uh, reduction boolean algebra reduction techniques so you can use any technique to do that but the simpler the simplest one is the k-map so we will use some k-map uh, some uh, this k-map method to design some reset signal to reset those undesired counts if there are any okay if in a mod n counter uh, we want to uh, reset the circuit for undesired counts then we have to design this reset circuit for this okay so, so either reset or reset bar whatever is the condition you can do anything and then verify the same thing with the help of the timing diagram so this is what the general design procedure for your asynchronous uh, asynchronous counters so if it is a modern asynchronous counter so this is what the general procedure you have to follow first decide the number of flip-flops required to design the counts okay so rather the first step should be you should know that how many counts you have to do so if you have to do let's say six counts as in this case as uh, we have understood in the example so if there are six counts so then you should write uh, you, you should call it as a mod six counter then this count six that is the capital n should be less than equal to two to the power n so this two to the power small n so this small n if you if you solve this equation then whatever the value of this small n comes that will be the number of flip-flops required okay then after deciding the number of flip-flops the next thing which we have to do is write the k-map for the uh, undesired counts to reset the undesired counts write the k-map for this reset signal okay and then verify the circuit with the help of the timing diagram if you are able to verify the circuit satisfactorily and uh, the, the timing diagram verifies the circuit whatever you wanted to design then your design gets complete so this is what the general procedure so we'll understand this with the help of a few examples so let's say our first example is our mod 6 mod 6 asynchronous counter only so your mod 6 asynchronous counter is the counter which can go through six states okay so there will be six stable states in it so what are those six stable states they are 
zero zero zero. So this is your first stage. Zero 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 is always means uh, is count zero is always treated as your first state. Okay, in case of uh, if in case the counter is an up counter. So I am assuming that we are designing an up counter. Okay, so mod six up counter. So zero zero zero, then zero zero one, then zero one zero, zero one one, one zero zero, and one zero one. So the counter mod six counter can count up to two to the power n minus one. So if it is an n mod n counter, so the maximum number of counts which can count the the maximum number of counts up to which the counter will go will be two to the power n minus one. Why? Because you see you can see it here. The counter it is a mod six counter, so it can count up to five only because two to the power n minus one is five. Okay, so the counter will can count up to five because five count five will be your actually the sixth count because you are treating zero as the first count. So apart from zero, if you consider the other counts, then be one, two, three, four, five. So zero is the sixth count. Okay, so in all there will be six counts, but The counter will go up to a maximum number of two to the power n minus one, so that is what it is. Okay. So now the number of flip flops required. How you will decide the number of flip flops? So we can decide it by these equations. So this is what the equation I was talking about in the last slide. So n should be less than equal to two to the power small n. So you see here you have six here. So if you solve this equation, so six to satisfy this six. Less than equal to two to the power some unknown, so you have to substitute this small n should be equal to three. So that is why you have decided that the number of flip flops required to design a mod six asynchronous counter will be three, right? Now, after deciding this, we will write its truth table. So let's say the truth table of the circuit is something like this. So the truth table is okay. So this is mixed, uh, but okay, I have kept it here. But there is a okay. So I have actually. Mm, okay, fine. So we'll understand it. So there are like okay. So first we'll clear it because there was some mistake in this table. So I have corrected it, but after correction, the arrangement becomes something like this. So okay. So don't uh, you worry about this. I'll explain the things to you. So what happens is let's say first clock pulse. So after every clock pulse, what happens? This is your zeroth clock pulse. Then first clock pulse, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Fifth and sixth. So you see, uh, I have already told you that the counter actually counts the number of clock pulses. Okay, so it is counting the number of clock pulses. So it will count up to the fifth clock pulse. In the sixth clock pulse, which is actually your seventh count, the counter will get reset. It. Okay, so you see, when you are after clock pulse zero, what will happen? Your counter should be the 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 counter should remain in the state zero zero zero. Okay, and you want this count to appear. So then you reset the the circuit should not be should not get reset in this case. So what we have done, we have used a zero here. Okay. So we have decided the number of three flip flops. So that is why we are writing Q1, Q2, Q3. Three flip flops for three flip flops. Then there should be three outputs of this uh, three flip flops, isn't it? Each flip flop should have a single uh, one output. So that is written as this is the LSB. Then this is your MSB. Okay. So let's first complete the truth table and then from that we will draw the To, uh, the circuit logic diagram. Okay, so this is after your uh, zeroth clock pulse. Reset circuit should be zero because you want this count to appear. Okay, so zero count will be zero zero zero. Then after first clock pulse, your count should become zero zero one. And after second clock pulse, zero one zero. So for all these cases, you can see that the reset remains zero. So up till five, your count will be one zero one. Okay, so in when the fifth clock pulse, when the sixth clock pulse, that is the after the fifth uh, this after the uh, this fifth clock pulse, what will happen? Your counter will be will count one zero one. Okay, and this count also you want because this is your sixth count. So the reset should be zero in this case. But when the next clock pulse occurs, okay, when the next clock pulse occurs, the sixth clock uh, the sixth after the sixth clock pulse, that is at the starting of the seventh clock pulse, what will happen? This will be your one one zero, okay. So this one one zero you don't want. So actually you want it to reset. I mean, when this appears, you want it to reset to zero zero zero. So for this particular case, you you make this reset signal high, okay. So you see that is why this R is becoming one in this case. Then once this appears, then again if the circuit goes into zero zero state, then again you want to 
start the counting in upward direction so that is why from this state when the next clock pulse appears then the circuit again go, go in the state 0, 0, 001 so you can see here that the next state is 0, 0, 001 okay so here in this case the counter will again the reset signal will, should get, should also should again become zero so this is what your truth table is so now to realize this truth table we have to make some circuit so what is this circuit is and whatever uh, reset signal should look like okay so we'll clarify this so for this reset signal okay considering these three inputs so we have to make a we may, we have to make a k map okay so this k map will solve this uh, this problem so this uh, will give you that when the circuit is becoming one so we'll understand it so and it is not difficult because the r input is becoming one only in one case okay so this which is this one one zero so you can easily uh, we can easily write the expression for this so i'll tell you that expression okay what it will be so uh, what it will be we'll talk about it later but first let's see that how to make an up counter so we already know that how to make an up counter asynchronous up counter so we in case of asynchronous up counter what we do uh, as it is as it requires three flip flops so we'll use three flip flops so three flip flops here used right and again we are using t flip flop as we have used in the last uh, case okay here the uh, this text is a little mixed up but don't you worry about it i'll explain it to you so there are three flip flops here which we are using to realize this circuit mod 6 counter so this is our first flip flop which is our lsb this is second flip flop and this is our msb flip flop now to the first flip flop we feed the your original clock actual clock then the input of this all this flip flops we connect it to one okay permanently then the first flip the output of the first flip flop becomes the input to the clock of the second flip flop okay and the output of the second flip flop becomes the input to the clock of the third flip flop so this is how we connect the circuit whenever you have to count uh, in the upward direction in an asynchronous counter so the connection will always be like this so this is very simple so that is why i have said that these circuits are simple to design because you know that how to connect but these circuits will be slow because why this will be slow because the clock signal is propagating from one the output of the first clock uh, first flip flop becomes the input to the second flip flop so up till this doesn't settles this flip flop will not respond and when this doesn't settle okay uh, this flip flop does not uh, starts to respond so you see there is a sort of serial type of transmission of the data and that is why you say that in asynchronous counters the output is slow okay that is why that is that was that were the two reasons which we have discussed in the very first uh, few uh, two slides that these counters are simple to design but slow so this is what the reason is right now uh, we have connected them and this is our clear input so we assume that before uh, starting the count we have reset it we use this clear input to clear all the these outputs right now now let's come to this reset signal so we want this circuit to get resetted for this undesired counts so for this undesired count as you can see i have already told you that it is because the r is becoming one uh, for only one and only one case so we have to design the circuit for this reset input with the help of some gates some logic gates okay and you can use kmap also to design it but as it is simple i will just write it by observation so what it will be so r is becoming one for this instant when q3 is one and q2 is one okay so you see what we will do we will take an and gate and we will make this q3 q2 both equal to one okay we'll take the output from this so you see this is our q2 this is our q3 so we take the output from q2 we take the this q2 output and this q3 output and feed them to an and gate okay feed them to an and gate so if you feed them to an and gate then it will generate your r bar but if you feed it to an and gate as you can see here it will generate r bar okay if you want to generate r then use an and gate if you want to generate r bar use an and gate so that is what a changes 
okay because nand gate is just opposite of the and gate okay so you see if you are using an and gate it will generate r bar so that is why earlier i have said you that write the twist table depending upon which type of gate is available for the implementation of the circuit because if suppose in the circuit itself is said that uh, generate the reset with the help of nand gate then obviously you have to use nand gate in this way and generate r bar okay but if no nothing is said then you can use and gate directly and can generate r also so that is your choice so now this reset is also generated and this reset output should get connected to the clear because you want the output to get in this case when this is the arrangement the output should get become to i mean the next state should be 0 0 0 so that is why you have connected this reset to the clear input of all this flip flops okay so the arrangement is i think it is clear there is no doubt and the same thing you can verify with the help of truth table so this is what your clock is so these are the negative edges of the clock pulse and you can see they are the negative edge triggered flip flops so we have to see this negative edges of each of the clock now when this negative first negative edge occurs so q1 transits okay so you can see this when the negative age of this 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 q1 occurs then q2 transits when the negative age of this q2 occurs then q3 transits okay and you can see as this is the transition which occurs because initially if both if all three of them are in 0 0 0 state then when this transition occurs uh, the arrangement will be 0 0 1 because this is our msb and this is our q1 is our lsb so the next arrangement next state will be 0 0 1 and the next state will be 0 1 0 then after that the next state will be 0 1 1 then 1 0 0 then 1 0 1 okay so after 1 0 1 for a slight moment what will happen 1 1 0 will come then this 1 1 0 as soon as it comes because you see this arrangement so for a slight moment 1 1 0 will appear but as soon as 1 1 0 will appear this signal reset circuit will get activated because you see this reset circuit is getting activated in this case and it is generating a clear output so this clear output is generated and the circuit gets resetted okay it's get the output gets clear again okay so this is what your circuit is right so i stop this uh, here itself and in the next slide i'll start with uh, the remaining asynchronous counters thank you for listening this lecture